Hello friends and welcome to my channel. I love Spellbinders Better Press of the Month Designer Plaid. This is just so versatile, good for any theme or occasion. My cards today will focus on Christmas. And of course, I had to incorporate that cute bear from the small die of the month. This is a registration press plate set. There are four different plates so that different colors can be applied. It also comes with sentiments and coordinating dies and of course the registration template. I'll start off by just laying out the press plates onto the template so that you can see how it goes together. The longer vertical ones will fit between the red lines. Shorter plates will go between the green lines horizontally. So now that I know where the plates are going, I'm going to set it up on my Better Press system. The magnetic platform on my machine is very stained and of course it has a grid. This makes it very difficult to see the grid on the registration template. I've cut some copy paper to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, the same size as the registration template, and have popped it underneath it. And I'll just go ahead as normal using some low tack tape to hold the acetate template in position. This now makes it very easy to align the press plates to the template. All three cards I'll be working with the Better Press Pebble Card Panels. These panels are a soft gray and I thought they would work really well with the colors of inks that I've chosen to design the plaid with. These backgrounds will be full size on an A2 size card. To hold them onto the playton, tape is rolled up and placed on the back of each of the panels. I'll be working with fresh dye inks. I'll just be demonstrating one panel, but the colors that were used for the other two panels can be found on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. For this one, I'm working with silver sage, jade, and eucalyptus. Jade, the mid-tone, has been applied to the wider press plate. For the thin one, I'm applying my darkest tone, eucalyptus. The ink is slower drying, so I'm able to ink up two of the press plates at once. Now I'll run it through my die cutter. The wider press plate will be used a second time. I'll move it so that it fits between those red vertical lines on the other side of the template. I'll continue with the same ink that was used during the first pressing, Jade. And you'll notice that I'm taking the ink pad and kind of sweeping it up and down because I want the ink to look consistent on the press plate. How it looks on the press plate is how it's going to look when it transfers to the paper. And now for the horizontal press plates. The wider one will be placed between the green lines at the bottom of the template. And this time I'll be applying a soft green called Silver Sage. The thinner plate will be pressed at the same time. I'll go ahead and ink it up using the same ink that was used for the thin vertical lines, Eucalyptus. The plate will fit perfectly between the two green lines that are near the top of the template. After the plates are inked, I will go in with a baby wipe and pick up anything that gets onto the template. Okay, and through the die cutter it goes. And the plaid design is really coming together now. I have one more pressing to do with the wider plate. It is moved up between the two green lines at the top of the template. And again, I'll go back to that same soft green silver sage. And then I'll run it one more time through the die cutter and this plaid design is now complete. This set is also accompanied by sentiments which are pressed all at the same time. Like the backgrounds, they were letter pressed onto the pebble better press paper. The plate was inked with better press black ink and then I use the coordinating die, which again cuts them all out at the same time, and I cut both the sentiments and white sheet foam. After the sentiments are adhered to the foam banners, I'll set them aside and let them dry completely before I pop them out. The plaid background panel is adhered to an A2 size card base. 
and my card base was just a hair bigger than the panel, so I've trimmed it down on my guillotine. I've already used this bear from the small die of the month on several cards. I just love him. He's so cute. His sweater was cut from white sheet foam and also patterned paper from Old Joyful Day 6x6 paper pack. The collar of the sweater has been cut from mint cardstock. There are some little slits. I don't like the patterned paper showing through them, so I'm going to be inlaying them with white ones. So I've put some scotch tape on the back of this die cut. I've die cut it from white, and all the little white slits stayed in the die, so that was lucky for me. They're all in order and I'll just poke them out and then use a jewel picker to pop them into place. And then the collar is adhered to the top of the sweater die cut. This time I've decided that I'm doing polar bears. On the back of the bear's head, I'm adding glue around the ears and eyes. There are some pink die cuts that I'll add to the ears and then a strip of black cardstock behind the eyes. The bear's muzzle is adhered to a foam die cut before it is adhered to his face. There are score lines to indicate where it is to be placed. Then I'll add in his nose and some cute little pink rosy cheeks. The top of the foam back sweater is going to overlap the muzzle on the bear, so I'm just trimming a little bit of that foam off the top of it. Then some adhesive is added to the bottom of the muzzle and the sweater is put in place. The small die of the month includes two strings of light. I'll be using the larger one which has been die cut two times from gold foil cardstock. The Christmas lights have been cut from mint cardstock, the same cardstock that was used for the collar of the sweater and also a pretty dark teal. The lights are alternated onto the strings. One of the strings of lights will wrap around the bear's body. Adhesive is placed on top of the string right at the end where it will tuck behind the collar and held in place with reverse tweezers. Bear is temporarily placed on the panel so that I can position the second set of strings which will be adhered directly to the background. As I place this die cut, I envision those lights sweeping behind the body of the bear so that it will look continuous when it comes out the other side. And now the bear can be put in place. The finishing touches for all three cards will be done in assembly line fashion. And I start by popping out those sentiments out of the foam. They're adhered so they're tucked between the string of lights and the top of the bear's head. So the plaid background is pretty helpful here because I can use it as a reference to line up my sentiments straight. I'll wrap it up by adding some Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew to each of the light bulbs. Initially, this medium is cloudy, but as it dries, it will be clear. These light bulbs will be shiny and dimensional. And that is a wrap on Spellbinder's Better Press of the Month. I think these cards are so cute. I really love the Design a Plaid press plate set. It is so versatile and could be used for any theme, any occasion. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate your visit.